a typical problem in material dynamics, the deformation of bars connected in parallel is similar to the problem of springs connected in parallel. This problem is also a statically indeterminate problem. We are now challenging this example. The problem is to find the elongation of three bars, which are in tension connected in parallel. In the case of material dynamics, if there are only two bars, they tilt. When putting two bars like this, the stiffer one is less elongated, and while less stiff one is less elongated, result in tilting. So, in this problem, we are placing two bars at both ends and another in the middle to avoid the tilting. As shown in the illustration, Three bars, which have common diameter of D, are connected in parallel by using a rigid plate. The bars on both sides have the same Young's modulus E1, and only the middle one is E2. Then, a load P is applied to the hole. This is the outline of this problem. What you need to do is calculating the solace generated in each bar and total elongation. The load acting on each of the bars is not known at this stage. But we know that the total load acting on the three bar is P. And if we consider the elongation, which is displacement of the three bars, we can say that they are all equal. So, we are going to use these conditions to solve this problem. From the top in order, we are calling the bars 1, 2, and 3. Then, we define the load acting on each bar, BP1, P2 and P3. And since they are equal to the external force P, the sum of P1, P2 and P3 is P. This is the first conditional equation. Then we are considering the stresses in the three bars. The stress is the load divided by the cross-section area. The cross-section area of all these bars is pi d square divided by 4. Thus, by substituting the cross-section area, we define sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3 as the following equations. Next, considering that the strains that occur in the three bars are equal, we are using the same symbol for the strains. The following equations are the relationship between the stress and strain derived from Fuchs law for each of the bars. Here, you may note that the Young's modulus for bar 3 is also E1, since bar 1 and bar 3 have equal Young's modulus. So, the following equations define the load in terms of strain, inserting the previous equations of stress. The unknown values at this stage is the strain epsilon. Considering the load acting on the three bars, which is the total of P1, P2, and P3 is P. We can now eliminate P1, P2, and P3 by using this relationship to get the following equation. 
because we know that the sum of P1, P2, and P3 are P. We solve the equation about Y. Now, we have the equation which defines the strain given by the two Young's modulus, the load and the diameter. Then, we can define the axial force of each of the bars. The following equation defines P1 and P3, which are the same. And for P2, we get this equation. From these equations, we can see that the loads are distributed proportional to the ratio of Young's modulus. The stresses in the bar, sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3, respectively, are calculated by dividing the load by the cross-section area to get these equations. As the result of the loading, the three bars are elongated. Considering that the strains that occur in the three bars are equal, we can use the strain equation that we have just found. Then, we calculate the length of the elongation by multiplying the strain obtained here by the length of the bars. This is the solution of this problem.